the word of today is minimal. What is the word of today? Minimal. The least possible. What is the word of today? always been a Christian my whole life. I was born in church. My daddy's a preacher. Amen. And that's fun. But I have not been a Christian my whole life. I've experienced more religion than you probably know exists. But let's go do the major six. And I can say yes or no. Christianity, yes. Islam, yes. Hinduism, yes. Buddhism, yes. The last one is Come on, I wrote the Old Testament, Judaism. And no, never tried being a Jew. And I said six. That would be the enemy's team. That would be Satanism. And I'd say yes. Been there, done this. But I came back around to Christianity rather fast. I took a big journey out of the park, you might say. Because any of you who know me know God is my birthday back. Mom, say it. Come on. Say it. For Halloween. No, the answer's no, son. That's not your birthday. Okay. Come on, get over it. Okay. <laughs> my birthday is March 11, 1991. That is when my mom conceived me and thank God. Or sorry, gave birth to me and thank God for it. Okay. Now, with that being said, I preached my first sermon on October the 31st. 
of 2004. Give or take. I was 13 years old, but did the math briefly. I was born in 91. So 10 years would be 2001. Oh, sorry, it would be 04. Oh, so three additional years. Yeah, 04, oh, I had it right. Praise God. Check my math in the chat. Put the number 13. Check my math in the chat. Okay, so, so check my math in the chat. Okay. Brief stories. Here we go. Here we go. No more religion. Because I had something crazy happen to me, and I missed you guys for like three weeks, right? Right? You guys know me. Remember, I was gone for like three whole weeks, and you guys were like, where'd he go? Yeah. He's supposed to preach to us. Where'd he go? Yeah. Right? And everybody got nervous. Okay. Well, Miss Dacia, my sister, who kind of runs this company that I work for called God's Brand Christian Academy, and it's a daycare, and she had me be her minister. Yeah, she up and decided she wanted to train all her faculty, so she whisked us away to the magical land of Disney in Orlando, Florida, where there was a conference for child care success and all this crazy stuff. And here I am in the middle of Disney, overwhelmed by people. They are bumping into me everywhere. Everywhere. And oh my goodness, I realize I'm blind. I can't see these many people. There's thousands of people in a small space. I can't see them. And if only they knew I was blind, they wouldn't bump into me. Don't you think? Right. Right? Right. But they don't know that I'm blind. Why don't they know that I'm blind? Because you don't have a stick. Someone said it. What's the word? You don't have a stick. Yeah, that's offensive. It's cane. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not trying to embarrass you. It is legally referred to as a cane. Amen. Stick is acceptable. Amen. So those of you that have never seen me often have never seen me look like this then. Amen. 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 But if I were to look like this, Ramel, I'd like to play the keyboard. Can I please? Okay, at this time I don't actually want to play the keyboard. Thank you for very No. You don't understand. You did a very good job. In the name of Jesus Christ, you did exactly what you were supposed to do. He knows me, though, but he knows I can do that. And by his request, I did that this morning. I, I didn't wake up this morning intending to do that. I did wake up this morning with my mind on Jesus. And, and I woke up changed from this experience with Disney. Oh, so I didn't go up the stairs, right? If you're blind and you go up the stairs, this happens. And if there was a second click, I knew there was another step. And if there was a third click, I knew there was another step. With this cane, I could run bleachers. I have in my past for exercise purposes. I was in gym class. Mom may or may not recall. I was in gym class and everyone was running bleachers and I was falling on my face. I mean, the Holy Spirit was straight up restructuring my everything, okay? My countenance felt like Moses. Cover that thing. And then my teacher said, don't blind folks have a cane? I said, yeah, why? He says, because I saw this perfectly blind dude. He could run bleachers perfect because he just hold the cane up in front of him. And when he had to go down, he just put the cane down. And I was like, oh, yeah, they taught us that to take the school for the blind and visually impaired. That's a mouthful. T S B B I. So in T S B B I, they taught us that. But I'm too prideful. I'm Superman of blind people. I tell you guys that all the time because I can drive and many of them can. But I'm allowed to use one of these and you're not. If you try, the state of Texas will find you five hundred dollars and the state of Florida will find you nine hundred dollars. Because you are not fully and or partially blind. But I am. You're not. I can do something you can't do. And when I do that, people will move out the way. It's like Moses. No, for real though, this 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 lady had like four children and a stroller. Four running children thing with no leashes and a stroller. Because you know they got the baby leashes now, that's crazy. Anyway, four running children thing, okay. 
And uh, in the process of having four running children thing, Candace Stroller almost got ready to run me over, but she saw my little pain, and I went like that, and popped the wheel of her stroller just lightly, intentionally speaking, so that way she would draw you know, her attention to me trying to keep up with Dacia's fast run, a little small self. I don't know how she does that. Um, all day, every day. Wow. Anyway, hear me. Ooh. Hear, hear, hear me, yeah, yeah. Come on, devil, get up out of here. Hear me. She said, stop, children. He has a walking cat. He can't see us. We have to see him. All right, I use my blind authority. I use my blind authority. Now, in the same way, you always are supposed to use the Holy Ghost as you walk down the street as this very evident thing. So that while you walk down the street, any devil that comes your way will know that's the person of God. How do I know it? In the scriptures, it says that when one man came up to a demon and tried to exercise him using Jesus' name, he says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, of whom Paul preaches. Now, he done dropped like three different, four different pronouns in a whole sentence. God said one name, one pronoun, one, Jesus Christ. Fix it. So he don't believe like that. And the demon looked at him, jumped on him, and tore him up and said, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but I've never heard of you. Now, they need to hear Ramel Ruffin's name next time whenever they come, you know, he can walk around the corner. They know it's Ramel. They just leave because of his walk with Christ. Uh-oh. Because we're about to tread into some deep waters. Okay. And I haven't written down the spirituality and the martial. Okay. So many of you don't know this about me, but those of you who know me do, I'm a martial artist. What? No way. But he blind. Now, he don't hit nothing. You just told me, like, straight up, everybody in the world ran you over. Because I was trying to be nice and passive and not get ran over, but just make my way downtown. Yeah. You know, like that. But that's a crawl. So. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. Hear me. When I used my authority as a blind person, it was quiet doing what I when I use my authority of God, it's using it in prayer, which is usually a quiet action. So it's quiet engaging your authority. Authority is not big and bolsters. They have a name for that in China. It's called paper tiger. I just told you two words that'll blow your mind if you look them up. Paper tiger. You don't want to be a paper tiger. Nothing made of paper is structured. So when the paper tiger roars and jumps on something, it just gets torn to bits. Don't do that. Okay. So, in the course of all of the journey, I realized as a martial artist, I can't just beat people up. And that took something from me from the time I was 13 to the time now, where I preached my first sermon as a minister of 19 years old. And now I get to do something. Anybody know who that is? Okay, I'm not actually going to ask you to raise your hand. Don't worry, you don't have to embarrass yourself. This little pudgy boy over here who is disgruntled, disgraceful, and in every way something we don't want, his name is Eric Cartman. And he has one given phrase to say to you at any given time. Respect my daughter! And he will. You. Quite thoroughly. And that's, and that's us as we journey through the world all the time. Really, anytime we get disrespected, that's what we turn into. We look just like this all the time. But you know how we feel? Please. Oh, it does it if you do it the right direction. I'm not engaging my brain. I apologize. I'm used to something different. We look like this man. 
Now you can raise your hand. Have you ever seen Bruce Lee? Yeah, Bruce Lee, bad man. He tells somebody with some kung fu all the time, but he came up with this phrase, be water, my friend. Now we feel big, bad, in control of ourselves, but also wise. Bruce Lee had a wisdom, be water, my friend. We're going to explore that as we go, as we journey into our scripture for today. Luke, the 10th chapter, verse 17 through 20. And I'm reading from the NFT. It'll read. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Boom! I'm telling you, it's necessary. I'm not going to do it today. There's a full screen option, but I'm not familiar where it is. Is that something y'all can control back there and full screen it again? Okay. I saw Satan fall from heaven like light. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy Nothing will harm you, he said to 72 old people. I thought he had 12 disciples. Okay, 72 old people. However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submits to who? You. What's that say up there? You. Wow. But rejoice, your name are written in the Heaven. And you may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. I have two topics to give to you um, today, and I promise you I know the stories were a bit not as brief as I wanted. But I have two topics to preach to you on today. Respect your own authority, or no way, God's way. Now, Now, what on earth is up with the little back end? Okay, seriously though, as we're moving through life and we get in situations like this, we think we're going to shake the devil down being a bully. We think being a bully one way or another is going to help us through. But Jesus repeated this miracle that he did. See, 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 see. Whenever Jesus came around and he did what he wanted to do, okay, he was like, mm, mm. Peter, James, John, Andrew, lines them all up. Thomas, come here. He sends them out two by two. I'm all the way in Luke 9. It sounds like Luke 10. Yeah, that's not cool. But Jesus is doing an encore, a repeat performance. The sermon almost got entitled God of the Encore. Okay. So, because I'm a musician, that'd be cool, right? God of the uncle. Yeah, that's a egotistical. Thank God he took that out of me. Okay. So, whenever it comes down to it, here we are. We're dealing with Jesus, and he says, okay, go out, disciple. Twelve, two by two, do these certain things. What did he tell them to do? He told them, go everywhere. Tell people exactly what you know and have seen and heard. Tell them about me. Just preach. And if you encounter demons, you can cast them out in my name and they will flee from you. And by the way, if you come somewhere and you're telling them of me and they reject you, you are to leave. That's what the sun would look like if y'all were cold rooms. <laughs> All right, so when they came back, all that big party stuff happened. Because it was true. It was 
so true, it was so true, it was so true. So you can't be Eric Cartman. You have to be Bruce Lee. You have to be water, my friend. Anytime you don't feel like Bruce Lee, that's okay. Go back to Jesus. I promise that he's going to make sense of it. But you can't be both of them. The point. Point number one, as I was alluding to, Jesus is the source. Amen. They went out. They came back. They go back out. They... Y'all cold. You're supposed to be hollering. They come back. Y'all know this scripture. Y'all can preach this sermon. This familiar stuff. You got this. You're going to preach. I promise. You got this. Watch this school. It's a magic trick. Okay. The point number two is going to be we don't have to. Jesus did. And point number three is going to be authority is not the end game. I'm going to tell you what the end game is. Don't worry. But authority is not the end game. Okay, the source, the uncle we talked about, the imbalance and the balance. Let's dig into that. This is why I got those up there. You can follow along with me so well. And by the way, since you guys can see so well, hold on, do I have it? No, my first illustration is not here. I was going to ask you, but oh, here it is. Does anyone need a notebook to take notes? I got a pencil in. This, this is going to be quick, but it's going to be something you might want to write down. Cause you you in the audience, you only get to experience this once. On the, on the internet, you can uh, you can look at it on the archive, right? Okay. All right. God is not for it. No, I'm sorry. I want the second point of that. We're on the imbalance. So here we are moving through life. Jesus has sent us out because we've been saved. If you've never been saved, you're going to find yourself in this circumstance in the event that you need to get saved. Come here, Donovan. Please. So we find ourselves in this circumstance. We're moving through life. Just continue to approach me. We're moving through life. We're moving through life. Man. Ouch. And we get offended. And we want to assert authority. And either we do it physically, verbally, spiritually, emotionally. This happens in your workplace. This happens everywhere you go. Thank you, sir. What's about that? Y'all are so weird, so cold. You can clap for the brother. He got pushed around and everything. That took God's skill not to strike me. Thank the Lord. I called the right deacon. That was Eric. I might be hurt right now. Not Cartman, Eric Smith. Eric Cartman, he's he's definitely gonna hurt me, but Eric Smith, I might I might pass. You know, he found he got he got Jesus. He doesn't have religion, he has Jesus. That's right. That's the difference, see. That's what I'm hinting at here. There's a difference between the Jesus and the religion. The Christians, according to uh, Miriam Webster, Christian can be an adjective, Christian can be a noun, and almost none of them are described as believer of Jesus. It says something about practicer of a Christian faith, studier of the Christian Bible, yeah. and things of the Christian, 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 Christian. We done turned into a whole bunch of Pharisees up in the temple. I need to make it a song. Pharisees in the temple. Amen. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, Jesus, I hear you. Because there's an imbalance here. That's where we are. There's an imbalance here. The imbalance is simple. We keep trying to do, but we don't go back to the source to find out some instructions. So every time we go out, we need to come back. Every time we need to go out, we need to come back. Every time we go out, we need to come back. Okay, I have a visual illustration, something you won't forget about this. Hold on. Ready? What is this? A what? A yo yo.
I told myself I wouldn't do that too much. And in the event I just had to come back, I got more strings in case I got knocked and come prepared to praise Jesus Christ up in this house. I got examples for you today because I'm not going to do much with it and holler until the end, I promise. Because I'm kind of, kind of excited, kind of nervous, kind of excited. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. We're moving quickly, okay? Because here's this thing. We have this imbalance. We keep wanting to go out, but we can only go as far, if we're a yo-yo, as what? The string will allow. We can only go as far as the string will allow. What's the strength? The Holy Ghost. We have talked about God the Father who gives instructions. Now we're talking about God the Son who's the source. My hand. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Whatever I want. But it has to come back to the the hand. The source. Exactly. You're following along with me, okay? All right, see, that's why I have all these visuals. Because now you can't tell me I'm confusing. Okay, so. As the balancer, the Holy Spirit tells you how to. He's the strength. How is he the strength? He's wireless. He lives deep down inside us. So that's what Jesus was illustrating here. But Jesus told them, I gave you power. The power was resting on them. After the resurrection, though, something different's going to happen. We're going to get there. Because if you've never heard this story before, it just might shock you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the balance. Now we understand the imbalance with the source. We have to go back. We can't demand to go further than the strength. The balancer is the Holy Spirit. Okay, part two. Where God's going to take you, He's not going to ask you to be safe. Resist all the time. And really, He doesn't say resist Satan. He says resist temptation. Resist temptation. In any event, you've watched South Park, there's Jimmy. So, resist temptation, and you will flee from the devil will leave. That's a step in the Bible. All right. You don't have to be dead. Woo! That's a big load off my mind because I'm only 32 years old, turning 33, coming up soon. And let me just go ahead and tell you outright, I'm getting old. <laughs> and everything that get old, it... It dies. Everything that get old, it... It dies, for sure. Mm-hmm. But my soul don't die. Right. See, Bruce Lee, in all of his philosophy, he had not found about the soul. Yeah. This is because Zen, although wise, cannot save you. And this is because Buddhism, although wise, cannot save you. The analogy of water. Mm. 
Y'all gonna hate me because you're gonna be thirsty. The analogy of water is not just Christians. When I first understood the sermon that the Lord asked me to go, I was gonna take a rip off of my uncle or my uh, godfather, uh, Reverend Howard. Um, he can preach you a really good sermon on water. In fact, I heard it and it was really inspirational and I leaned back on um, for this. So shout out um, to Bill Howard. Um, but no, in just the Christian roots, water can be chaotic, water can be renewing, water can be a great many things, but water is always one thing. It is always water. And that means it has a nature. And one of the natures of being beating death and beating the law is being like water. Because you're stressed about getting old, but you can't control getting old, can you? And you're stressed about keeping this law of Moses, some of you. I'm not thinking about keep the law of Moses. That's why I say you and not us. So if you choose to be a Christian that doesn't keep the law of Moses according to Galatians, that's okay. By the way, if you choose to believe in Christ but not be a Christian, that's okay. Christ is what saved you. Jesus beat those things. Christianity doesn't have the marketplace on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was a man who died and was risen. He's the one who beat those things. It already happened. We don't have to. And the reason that's important is because when these disciples cast out demons, it was similar to them watching Jesus, who was literally in heaven, who literally saw Satan fall from the sky and describes it to look like lightning. He already beat Satan. He didn't raise a hand to do it. He sent an angel to do it, and they might believe. Yeah. Hmm. According to the scripture. By the way, every scripture I quote, feel free to look it up. I didn't write it in my notes. Because the goal today was to not reference scriptures outside of this text because it gets a little longer by now. So I'm trying to speed it along because I feel time coming. Okay. Mm. Let's get to the point. Authority isn't the end game. We have power. Not what? Sorry, now what? That's a typo. Found it. I did the beauty swan. Salvation. Here we go. So whenever you're like water moving through this existence, you have to be respectful. There are obstacles in the way. There are things that happen with the nature of water. And it's very, 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 very important in all stages to keep some things together. Because the Holy Ghost is going to fill you up. Now, for the Holy Ghost to fill you up, what happened? He needs to pour. Correct. And whenever it's time, I want you to tell me a specific word. If you don't, something weird might happen. I heard it. Someone said it. Stop. Bruce Lee meditated on this exact parable which was given to him by a Buddhist that somebody from college came to some Zen master to learn about the ways of the East and the Zen master told him that his cup was too full. Now he could put something in it. What's the point? Sometimes we come to God with the precepts of what it is to walk in Christ, but we don't know. That's your shepherd. We don't know what it is to walk in Christ fully. And that's why he told us to stay in an infant-like mindset. And that's why the preacher came to you to do weird things that you've never seen before. Because unless you're a child, 
will never get the full understanding of Jesus Christ. And that's our focus. How many times today did I say our focus was to get an understanding of the Bible? Did anyone count? None. Correct. None. Thank you. Somebody said none. I think that was Theo. Amen. Okay, leave it to Theo Anderson to be the boldest man in the room to actually answer the questions out loud. That's why I'm so glad he's here today. If that was Theo, just give yourself kind of an applaud with one hand. Amen. With one hand. That's my big brother. Amen. I love Theo Anderson. He's a preacher, by the way. I don't know his anniversary date. I didn't write it down. Okay. Sorry. Mm. As I said, infant-like mindset. Water-like mentality. Water has no form, no shape, no structure to it. It just keeps doing whatever I want. What would happen if I spilled the water on the ground? It would get wet on the ground, and then it would be water in the ground, but eventually it would dehydrate, and if it dehydrates, it turns into water as a gas, okay? And then water as a gas turns into clouds, and then things that are clouds eventually condensate, and things that condensate become rain. Thank you so much, Carolyn Anderson. Shout out to you. You're playing the trivia game quite well. Okay, so oh, she's getting into the part of this you're supposed to shout. You're supposed to be getting excited somewhere I've been here because I'm telling you I'm done already. Because if you're water, you don't seem to care as you exist. You just keep existing. You just keep moving through this thing called the water cycle. And eventually as you get down to the water cycle, you get back to the point of the day, salvation's point of the day, getting back to the source. The source being Jesus Christ. Yeah, we're getting ready to go home today. Right now, right now, right now. I'm serious. Hear me out. Because as you get to the source. Oh, Jesus. I didn't want to do the thing. Eric, save me. I can't call Jesus to save me on this one because I sincerely cannot see this down here. Um, otherwise, Jesus would give me vision for that. Okay, but we're getting down to the point of the day. The conclusion is John 3, 16. God sent his son something from the source, the water, something from the source, and he poured it out over all of creation whenever he died on the cross. That is actually the point. So if you're going to respect your own authority so that other people can respect you, and you're not Eric Carmen, and you are someone more like Bruce Lee, who most people respected, okay, so if you're going to be that, then you need to be like Christ. You gotta be like Christ. Yeah. You gotta be like Christ. Because Christ came meek and humble, oftentimes as a blind man. He did not perceive to see the problem he asked. And when someone brought him a problem, he listened. But just like a yo yo, he went back and forth, going up and down Judea. Sending his disciples up and down Judea. And all day, while it was day, that's what he would do. But at night, his spirit would fill you up. Up and down from heaven to glory. Up and down from the Father back to himself. Give me that, please. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. He began to live the word of the Lord for Christ. And for the one to four. That's all right. He began to receive. The word of the Lord. It came down like the water from the cloud. From his mouth he poured it out for your ears to receive. And when he hung upon that tree, the cross, he died for you and me. 
let me get to my point. He didn't stay in the ground long. And I ain't talking about Groundhog Day. Because in three days' time, he got out. Like water comes down and like water goes up. Be like water. Do anything Jesus asks you to do. All day today, I have felt awkward. All day today, I have felt awkward. Everything has felt off. My cheeks feel warm. My ears feel hot. Jesus is 
too big. He's too big. He came in the flesh, but he's God. He's God. He's got this cover. I keep mentioning the name of Jesus because I mentioned a whole bunch of religions today that you can look up, you can try them. And some of them have good philosophies and they'll help you with stress and they'll help you calm down and get nice and loose and you'll have peace in your heart and everything will be wonderful, but your soul will go to hell. Yeah. Amen. Because you wouldn't have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the truth. You can try all the good philosophy you want. But if you want demons to tremble because they heard you come, get in touch with Jesus. You got issues in your life and you need to get them solved, get in touch with Jesus. If you're on the job and you have disrespectful employees, get in touch with Jesus and watch them fall in line. Never have I ever been more grateful to turn away from everything I had ever thought was smart and genius and wonderful and just accept Jesus. Because I preached to you in a typical sermon, so what denomination did it come from? Baptist. Not Baptist. Baptists don't preach like that. They be doing more of the hooping and the hollering. I, I tried to go Baptist. That wasn't in me. Jesus didn't pour that in the ball on a different day. On a different day. He might. But on today, if he did be water, my friend, I can only pour out what he poured. Be water, my friend, and accept Jesus Christ. See, I can say that to you. There's someone might say, that's a heretical statement. This man's a heretic. That's a heretical statement. Hey, if you got stones, you can throw them out. I have my Jedi's wand. I will deflect them accurately. I am in fact the swordsman. Throw something and watch it get sliced out of the air. Theo, don't you do it. Down, Theo. Down. Yeah, 
fans of having the impact. If you did not, I advise you to get in contact with one of our deacons, Deacon Eric Smith on the drum, Deacon Donovan on the back, currently working the slide and the camera. Thank you, Deacon Donovan, or one of our deaconesses, Deacon Kendall, or So, as we like to say around here, see you next week.